Ozempic does interesting things to the brain. It changes how we look at food, or at least how our brain sort of looks at food. Now, I also want to talk about ways that we can increase GLP-1 within our bodies without utilizing something like Ozempic. But I also want to make it very clear that Ozempic's paving the way for a lot of interesting research and understanding of human metabolism. So I don't want to throw it all to the wayside and say this stuff is bad. There are people out there that could really, really, really benefit from it. I don't necessarily agree with the rampant use of it, and I feel like the muscle wasting is definitely problematic, but I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. I want to talk about some interesting literature on how it impacts the brain. So we're going to talk about that, and then we're going to talk about ways that you can increase GLP-1 within the body, but keep it circulating for longer periods of time, because that really is the big piece. GLP-1, when naturally released within the body, like consuming fiber, protein, things like that, it only lasts for a couple minutes before an enzyme comes in and snips off two of the peptides on that chain and basically renders it useless. So people don't really talk about that, but that's a really important piece. So let's go ahead and break it down. But first, I put a link down below for today's sponsor, which is Bomar Nutrition. It is the best whey protein that I have ever had. And I can look in the eyes and tell you that. It is unbelievable tasting. The flavors that they have, they have nailed it with flavor profiling. As a matter of fact, that's what it really was that started them initially, was their flavor profiling. But I wasn't as big of a fan because they were using sucralose, so I couldn't really like utilize them. But then Josh, who's the owner, who became a good friend of mine, we talked about how they could change that. So they switched over to allulose, which interestingly enough, allulose is one of the most potent stimulators naturally of GLP-1, so kind of interesting. So now the stuff is like totally Thomas approved, but also tastes unreal. Their vanilla ice cream, their double fudge, I'm telling you, it tastes like a McDonald's milkshake. It's unreal, not to mention, of course, the protein content is amazing. So that link is down below. That's a 15% off discount link. I think it'll become your new favorite protein. So again, link down below underneath this video. Check them out. So how GLP-1 affects the brain, and this includes with food, but mainly when we're talking about things like Ozempic, Wagovi. Okay, there was a study that was published in diabetes. It took a look at 48 subjects that had diabetes and some that were obese. Okay, and what they did is they gave them a GLP-1 receptor agonist, and they looked at their brain when they showed them pictures of food, and they also monitored, of course, how much they ate. Here's what's really interesting. Compared to placebo, when GLP-1 was in the equation, the brain didn't even react to pictures of food the same way that the placebo brain did, meaning that it was changing how we actually see food. Now, the thing that interests me the most is that we know today, based on science, that neuroplasticity is real, that we can actually change our brain and change habits if it happens for a long enough period of time. So this is promising in some ways because people that are really dealing with obesity might actually get a benefit of changing their brain and how they look at food. But the fact is, GLP-1 works because it's circulating for a long enough period of time where these effects can take place, right? They can take place and allow you to not be interested in food as much. Now, the big piece that people know, like GLP-1 affects appetite, it also affects glucose metabolism, so we know that. But I wanna pivot over to some foods for a minute. And first I'll hit the basics, right? The basic basics, protein, and fiber are some of the most potent simulators of GLP-1 as far as food is concerned. That's why when you consume protein, you feel so satiated. You have a pretty serious continuous release of GLP-1. But what happens is you have this thing called DPP-4, this enzyme, and it snips off two of the peptides off of GLP-1 and it makes it so that it's pretty much useless after one or two minutes. Peptides are fragile. They don't last for a super long period of time, and especially when they're like in fragmented form. So in this particular case, it's really important that you do a couple of things. If you're trying to improve your GLP-1 levels without utilizing Ozempic, Yes, you need to eat protein, you need to eat fiber. I would highly, highly, highly recommend you use allulose as a sweetener or literally as a supplement. Like, yes, it is sweet, but you could take a tablespoon of the stuff just to curb your appetite. Okay, so, and I have recommendations there too, but like, flat out, allulose is important for that. But fiber is really important, particularly soluble fibers. Okay, now, do not click off the video yet because that alone is not the answer, okay? But glucomannan fiber, like shirataki noodles, huge effect there, okay? So definitely pay attention to that. Additionally, even things that are gonna be high in prebiotic fiber, things like that are gonna have a powerful effect. But next, what good is that doing you if the GLP-1 is not 
lasting for a long period of time because of the DPP4 enzyme. Well, now we've seen some evidence that shows that in one particular case, like a, there's a nut or a seed called a Sacha Inchi seed, where the protein in a Sacha Inchi seed releases 10 different peptides when you can consume it that actually inhibit DPP4. So Sacha Inchi is really big in that. I've talked about that before. I just recommend just eating straight up Sacha Inchi seeds. They're pretty beneficial and they taste good and they're high in fiber or zero net carb anyway. Okay, so that alone, the protein in Sacha Inchi has this effect at inhibiting DPP4. But there's other foods too, orange peel, for example. There's something called malvidin in citrus. So citrus in general, along with the actual peel itself, has a pretty strong DPP4 inhibition effect. So I would recommend like zesting some oranges and you know putting it in something. These little things add up. They sound like, okay, Thomas has gone off his rocker. He's talking about zesting with orange peel for a fat loss benefit. I know it sounds like some TikToker talking about some weird thing. I'm not saying it's gonna save the day. I'm saying it has an interesting impact and there is science to back it up. The other thing is grape seeds. So grape seed extract, grape seed oil, although I don't necessarily recommend using the oil a whole lot, but better yet, just eat a handful of grapes that have the seeds in them anyway. I like the grapes with the seeds because they're not adulterated and twisted up anyway. So eat a couple grapes with the seeds and you might notice a strong satiety effect from the fiber, from the oil, and from the DPP-4 inhibition. Mollusks, so eating kind of like uh, clams or eating oysters or eating mussels, these have a actually a very strong DPP-4 inhibition effect. Eggs also, just not quite as strong as mollusks. Protein in general generally has this, but one of the ones that's probably the most potent is good old fashioned curcumin. So curcumin, turmeric, okay, this has an effect on DPP-4 inhibition for 24 hours. And it doesn't just sort of downregulate it, it can actually really inhibit it. So I've been a fan of curcumin from an anti-inflammatory perspective for a very long time anyway, and I think it's hugely beneficial, but I think that if you start adding it in along with some of these other things that increase GLP-1, so curcumin plus fiber, curcumin plus protein, put a teaspoon of curcumin in a protein shake, you're barely gonna taste it, and you might just find you get an added effect, right? You get allulose, you get protein, you get fiber, then you get the DPP-4 inhibition. I sound like a crazy person, I know, but I will go to the ends of the world to be able to try things with foods before I would have to say, okay, I'm gonna try you know, Ozempic or Wegovy. But I'm also not morbidly obese. I was at one point, but the point is, is if you need it, you need it. I'm not trying to poo-poo it. But I am saying let's do the most that we can with what we got. I'll see you tomorrow.